Now it's going to be very difficult for anyone to make progress on their spiritual path without some knowledge, in fact some very intimate knowledge of their chakra system. So I'd like to spend a few minutes talking about this, uh, these chakras, what are they, where they belong, etc. Now there are literally thousands of chakras they are inhabiting or they're part of your energy body called the pranamaya kosh. So this energy body is superimposed on your physical body. It doesn't these chakras don't exist on in your physical body. They're in your subtle body. And they, but they have a great correspondence with your physical body and analogically you can uh, consider them to be like organs, you know, they uh, have special functions just like your liver, heart, stomach have uh, physical functions, the different chakras do different things. Now in uh, the healing and uh, spiritual uh, paths of India, we lay great emphasis on the six main chakras, okay, which are along the spine. And uh, this is the uh, central spine, Sushumna Nadi, you know, in your subtle body, not your physical spine, but they correspond very closely to where your physical spine is and some of the nerve plexus of, the, uh, of your nervous system as well. And so the chakras, uh, they regulate life force pran. The pran is uh, regulated by the chakras. Okay, so uh, for instance, your navel chakra will be responsible for the health uh, of uh, everything to do with uh, your digestion, with your stomach area, liver, and stuff like that. So, you know, if your navel chakra is uh, blocked or has some impairment, then there will be a lot of digestion problems. Uh, there will be problems with uh, your liver or pancreas and organs which are in your physical body. Okay, so that's because it, uh, the life force is needed for the functioning, the proper functioning of the physical organs which are regulated by that chakra. Now, from a spiritual perspective, the chakras are where the, uh, the karmic blocks, okay, the history of your karma is also recorded there. So the uh, chakras, uh, they make, give you a map of uh, your karmic balance in this particular life. So working on the chakras are essential. Working on the chakras, the practices of working on the chakras, it's essential to uh, spiritual evolution because in order to overcome your karmic blocks, the programs that you came into this life with, the consequences of all your past actions, uh, they determine the openness and the closeness of each of these uh, chakras, the speed and the balance between the chakras as well. So it's a very complex subject and uh, it uh, can take a lifetime to learn all about it. But many spiritual practices, uh, they directly work on the chakras without uh, requiring you to know that much about them. Right? But uh, a little bit, uh, some background knowledge is very important, otherwise you would be doing these practices blindly without understanding their, uh, their consequences and how they are supposed to work. Right? So the first chakra is at the uh, base of the spine and corresponds to the perineum where the, between the genitals and the anus is a soft spot called the perineum. This is where the muladhar chakra 
resides, the first chakra. Uh, this corresponds to the survival, uh, this corresponds to the uh, material plane. Okay? Your physical body is most ruled by this first chakra. Uh, so any uh, dysfunctioning of the first chakra will affect your physical body very quickly. This is also the area where the emotions of fear arise. Yeah, that's because this first chakra is responsible for a lot of your instincts, the instinct of survival. Yeah, so when uh, we were in the olden times, uh, you see a, uh, uh, an animal that uh, is about to attack you. They say a saber-toothed tiger at the time of the Cro-Magnon or something. Then uh, you would run away. Okay, so but if you see an animal like a deer, you would uh, run after it to try to catch it for food. So uh, you have a fight or flight uh, instinct. But nowadays, uh, the fear complex becomes internalized and it causes a lot of problems. And so by working on the first chakra, you can uh, rid, of your, rid yourself of uh, this fear complex. So this is just an example. Uh, we don't have time to go through all the chakras. But the second chakra is uh, at the uh, sacrum, that's about three inches above the tailbone, and that's called the Swadhisthan chakra, and that's responsible for your emotional nature. If you move higher up the spine at the back, opposite to where your navel is, that is the third chakra, the Manipura chakra. And this is responsible for your energetic uh, body. And so uh, this is the primary chakra for energy distribution. Although all the chakras distribute energy, this one has the dominance when it comes to uh, energy distribution. When you move higher up uh, the spine to where your chest is, that's the heart chakra, Anahata chakra. And that corresponds to the mind. And so the functioning of your heart chakra actually affects your mind. If you move higher up uh, to the throat area, at the base of the throat, that's the fifth chakra. And that is the uh, Vishuddha chakra. And that corresponds to uh, the higher states of uh, communication, okay, so uh, also intuition, so it's a higher level of uh, information gathering and processing. If you move higher up to the middle of your brain, there is the third eye center, the Ajna Chakra, and that is where superconscious states uh, occur. And so these are the six chakras which we use uh, when we are doing uh, spiritual practices. The seventh chakra, yes, there is a seventh chakra on top of your head. And if you move up to the middle of your head, that is called the thousand petal lotus, the Sahasrara chakra. But we don't practice with this thousand petal lotus. It is the goal to achieve. That is where you achieve self-realization when you move up to the thousand petal lotus. Right? So this is the chakra system and uh, it is very important to have uh, some knowledge of it uh, if you uh, want to make progress on your spiritual path. Many, many books uh, have been written on the chakras I have a workbook on the chakras and I do workshops on, uh, on the chakras. But even if you don't specialize on the chakras, uh, whether you practice uh, Kriya Yoga, Hatha Yoga, any type of yoga, the chakras are involved in some way or the other.